<laughs> we're gonna do some scary stuff today. We're gonna make a cauldron and put some fire underneath it, and then we're going to make smoke come out of the top of it. So we want to get a couple of fairly tricky tricks in SketchUp and Stager, a little bit of Photoshop. So this is going to be a little bit more convoluted. Hopefully you can follow along. It might be about 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to try and show you these things fairly quickly so you can pause me and come back and see what happened in the middle of this thing. Um, I'm going to share my screen. And by the way, I want to mention that uh, Ronnie and Vijan really gave me some help on this thing. I so appreciate my students who are great at this thing. So hopefully you can see what I've got here. I'm in SketchUp, as you can see. And the first thing we're going to do is make this cauldron. So I just drew this with arcs. I kind of drew that profile of it, drew a circle on the ground. And you know what happens next. I'm just going to grab that path, the uh -huh, grab that path right there, the round path on that thing, follow me tool, and then come back and hit this shape. Um, I, I use the offset tool to make the thickness of the wall. It's a pretty cool trick. So now what I've got there is a cauldron that I can then say save as cauldron and put it in week 12. Yes, I do want that there. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is come back to Stager and import that model. File import, 3D model. I do want the cauldron. Bring that in. Thank you very much. And make UVs sure. Doink. Perfect. I'm going to move that up a little bit because we want to build a fire underneath this thing. So let's just put that there. Um, and in my assets here, starter assets, I've got in the models, if we kind of zoom around inside this, you know you've got your basic shapes right here with the you know uh, kind of platonic solids and things like that. But I've also got a whole bunch of stuff here. I don't have a fire in here, but I do have kind of a splash that we can make look kind of like a fire. So I'm going to grab that splash. It will import it into the model. I'm going to grow that quite a bit. These boxes are, of course, how you um, um, scale something up. So I'm going to scale that up until it's kind of you know proportionate to my cauldron. Move it underneath right to the center there. And then um, if you hold down your shift key, when you scale something, shift and the green box, it will scale only on that axis and squash it down kind of flat. So it gets looking like that. So now I've just got the two things on my um, model. I can grab the number one key and scroll around and make sure that I'm kind of happy with where things are positioned. I might go a little bit around this way. Eh, maybe not. Maybe what I'll do is just move that back a bit. So I'm going to grab that cauldron V, grab that, and then on the blue go that way and with my red arrow go back that way. So now I've got kind of the cauldron sitting on top of what is going to end up being our fire. Now you're just about to get your head knocked off. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but this is so cool. We're going to put some materials on this stuff. The first one, I'm just going to grab this and say materials. Here's my materials right there. And there are a bewildering array of materials. So it's, and there's no easy way. Just hunt around, explore, experiment, try new things, see what happens. And because they're also parametric, which is to say editable, I can put a dark green one on here and say, yeah, that's cool. I don't want that to be a dark green cauldron. I want it to be kind of a black cauldron. But now because I've got my object selected here inside my scene window, there's my Y up convert. I don't know why it always comes in with that name, but it does. But now I can come back down to this and say the material that's on this is dark green and there's my color. I don't want that color. I want it to be a black, you know, ferocious cauldron and it'll change it. So even if you choose a material that doesn't look right, you can go back in and edit a lot of things about it and make it look the kind of way that you want it to do. That's not the cool part. This is the freaking cool part. This is the part that you're going to flip. I was knocked out. This is so great. So what you can do with this splash is say, I want that to be, here's my color for the splash right there. Let's make that more of a fiery color. So I can kind of come back in here and say you and maybe you and maybe uh, maybe a little bit farther back there and kind of a you know flaming orangey color. That's cool. But it still looks like, you know, a blob of, I don't know what, paint underneath there. This is the part that's incredible. There's an emissions control right here underneath anisotropy that lets me turn up the emissions on that thing and make it hot. doesn't look like much of anything yet because the emission color is black. Let's change our emission color to match the color of our splash. And, uh, my God, look at that. Now, I do have ray tracing turned on. If I turn that off... It starts to look like not so much. 
So, but if I turn that on, all of a sudden you start to see how cool this is going to look. The other thing I just wanted to mention is if I go back to ground and say, um, I don't, I do want my ground plane. I'm sorry, I don't even want to go ground. I don't, I'm going to turn off my grid. That helps a little bit. And I'm going to go back to background and make the background blackety black. So now I've got this really kind of powerful look right there. The last thing I just wanted to show you is this kind of cool idea with how you would make the smoke to come out of the thing. Um, what we've got to do is create a surface upon which we can then place some smoke. So I'm going to show you quickly a trick that is pretty cool in Photoshop. In Photoshop, here we are, i got to get zoom out of the way, always got to get zoom out of the way. Um, there are two layers, a black layer and a white layer on the, the blank layer. Really, it's not the white layer, it's the blank layer. And on the blank layer, what I have done with a brush tool, a soft brush, is just gone and made it a little squirrely, squirrely. Now what I'm going to do is go to my filter menu and look at uh, Blur Gallery, and I want to get to the Path Blur. This is a really cool trick. So it gives you a little path right here. These little blue dots are the path. The red dots are the speed of the path. So what we can do is put the blue dots more or less where we want them. You can already see things are starting to happen there. Knock it off. I'm trying to get to the blue dot. Blue dot there. And then what I can do is just kind of put pins in this is almost like a puppet um, almost like we'll do in After Effects later on and where you can take individual pieces and try to match up that curve more or less to that and then these as I see the speed points on the ends go whoa and look what's happening already we're starting to get some really nice effects in there you can see what's happening if I go to that end point and I come over here to this menu that's my end point speed is 517 pixels and I'm loving it so I just kind of mess around with this thing until I'm kind of happy with how that smoke looks. Maybe I want to pull the speed back a little bit on the bottom one so it looks like it's a little more condensed at that point and then it evaporates up. So let's say I'm happy. I go up here and say, okay, got a piece of smoke now. I'm going to turn off the bottom layer, file, export as PNG. I'll get myself one that's called smoke. PNG inside there probably says you've already got one. That's okay. I'm going to replace it. And now just that layer comes in as a piece of smoke. Now I go back to Stager and we're going to go back to our starter assets objects. And up in the very plain basic shapes, there's a plane. So now if I click that plane, it says, okay, I can give you a plane. I'm going to put one right here in the middle of your object. I'm scaling it up to the point where it's kind of like, okay, I can kind of see it. Maybe I can kind of see it. It's pretty small. There we are. We're going to, oh, if I hold down shift, it'll mess it up, right? So don't hold down shift. Just let it grow on all three axes. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. And then I want to rotate that so that it's vertical. If I hold down shift key, it'll lock it to 90. And then I want to rotate it on this. Looks to me like it's the red axis and get it kind of flat onto us. Okay. Now I'm going to move it on the red axis up into, so it's like halfway through the cauldron. You can see what's kind of happening right there. Now, yeah, I hope you're still with me. I'm going to come back here to my materials and say, give me that in glass. And it basically disappears, which is pretty great. Now, as you well know, when you use an object like that, one of these basic material or um, basic tools, it will come in with, uh, it's not a standard object. You can't put a graphic on it. So the first thing I have to do is come over here into Actions and say Convert to Standard Object. That then becomes a sticker icon. I grab my sticker and say I want to go get smoke. Where'd my smoke go? I had it there. Maybe it's not quite thought about yet. Sometimes you have to kind of click back out of your menu and then back in again. And there it is, Smoke PNG. Open that. Plop onto there. Oh my God. How cool is that? Then you can use this to rotate it if you want. I don't want to rotate it. I actually think it looks pretty great. But you can rotate it there. And then, of course, these buttons out here give you a scale. So I can grow it a little bit or fool around with it. So that's how you might make a flaming fire under a smoking cauldron. It's kind of a cool set of tricks. I hope you're having some fun with this stuff. I'm just having a blast. Anyway, talk to you soon. See you later. I look forward to seeing what you make. Bye-bye.